Hi there. The one thing that can really take your images from being ordinary to extraordinary is knowing how to edit your pictures correctly. This week, I'm going to show you how to edit your pictures in Lightroom. So this is going to be a step-by-step -step guide for beginners in using Lightroom. Let's go and take a few pictures. So one of the things that will take your pictures from being ordinary to extraordinary is learning how to edit them. Now, there's loads of programs out there in the market, but one of the ones that I use and I find it very simple, easy to use, and you can get some really, really good results, is Lightroom made by Adobe. It's simple to use, and this week I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to use it there. Now, but the first thing we have to do is we have to get a few images taken, so I'm going to take you to one of my favourite locations here in Donegal, and I'll show you how I edit my images. Here we are at one of my favorite locations. It's absolutely beautiful here. And wait to see when we get down to the actual shooting spot itself. Absolutely beautiful. This is beautiful place. I absolutely love it here. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brendan Diver, and if this is your first time here, I'll be teaching you videos each week on all things photography related. If you'd like to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, you won't miss any videos in the future. This is where I live, County Donegal, one of the most amazing places in the world for taking photographs and a brilliant place to live. So, welcome to Donegal. So folks, just to give you a little bit of an idea, that piece of land that's just jutting up there, on the far side, that's Marlin Head. It's Ireland's most northerly point. So if you look at the map of Ireland and look at the very, very top of that map, that's where that piece of land is right behind you. It's as far north as you can go there. It's also where one of the Star Wars films was actually made as well. I am so, so lucky to live here in Donegal. It's absolutely fantastic if you're into photography. You can see the scenery around here. It's just absolutely stunning. And it doesn't matter if the weather's bad or good, you can always get some fantastic shots here. So this is where I'm going to take a few pictures to show you. And then I'm going to show you on the computer screen afterwards when I get back in the office, how I'm going to edit these images. So the first thing we have to do is we have to copy our images from the camera onto our computer. Now for this tutorial, what I've done is I've created a folder on the desktop and I've called it sample images. So that's where I've actually put my images. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Lightroom program. And then what we have to do is we have to copy these images from that folder into the program itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to import them. Now, down here on the bottom left-hand corner, there's a, an option here that says Import. So we're going to click on Import. And now it's going to ask us where are these images that we have on the computer. So we're going to go to the folder, which in this case I have it on my desktop. So here I have a desktop and I've got a folder here called Sample Images. Now, again, it'll be different on yours, but this is where my images are stored. So I'm going to click on this button down here in the bottom right-hand corner where it says Import. And what this is going to do is it's going to start copying or importing these images from that folder into the program itself. Now, this might take a little while. Now, depending on the speed of your computer, this might take a little while. So, you see you've got a screen here. We're going to go up to the top here and go to develop. 
Now again, bear in mind this tutorial is purely for people that haven't used Adobe Lightroom before. Um, so this is just gonna be a very, very basic step-by-step -step guide and introduction, if you like, to using Lightroom. Now, you see here, you've got your preview window here, and this is all the images that I've actually got taken from that photo shoot. So what I'm gonna do is I always like to, you see every image down here, it's labeled, it's given a different unique number. Now, I think for this image here, if, um, I'm gonna use this one. Now, what you can actually do is you can actually flag your images. Now, what I mean by this is, you see you've got maybe 10, 20, maybe hundreds of images. You pick the images that you like. So in this case here, I'm going for this number up at the top. So I can click on the symbol here, this red icon. And now I can actually give this image a label, a, a unique color. So at a glance, I can see from all the images, which ones I'm going to pick. So I'm gonna go along here now, pick another one. Uh, let's see now. Yeah, I think I like that one there as well. I think I'll pick that one too. So I'm giving that red. Let's see, we'll pick a few more. Yeah, I like that one. And I think I'll pick this one here as well. So, I think that's my images then that I'm going to pick. Now you can see I've got a lot of images taken here, but it's just gonna kind of a little bit confusing here to see which is which, even though I've labeled them red. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go up to the very, very top here, up to file, I'm gonna go down to library filters, and then enable filters. Now what I can actually do is for the next stage, I can actually just display the images that I've labeled with the red color. So I'm gonna go back up to file, library filters, and then I'm gonna filter by color label. And in this case, I've set the, the chosen images that I like to red. So I'm gonna display just the selected images that have been marked or flagged as red. And you can see here now I've got seven images that I've actually chosen. Now, I'm gonna work on this first image here. So this is actually off the location that we're at. Now, a couple of things would I do all the time um, I've got a certain workflow. Now, this is just my way of doing things. It may not be the same way that other photographers would work, but this is the way that I do things. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, because we've taken these images here all outside, you can set the white balance. Now, you can, you see here on the right hand side, which says WB for white balance. You can have the white balance as it is straight from camera, or I can set it to daylight, or auto, cloudy, depending. On what the weather is like so i'm going to pick, put it to daylight now i'm going to scroll down and one of the options that i select is remove chromatic aberration i'm going to put a little tick in this now what chromatic aberration means is sometimes if you've got areas of high contrast say kind of a uh, rocks or kind of hills or buildings against a very light background you might almost get like a little extra outline showing maybe in a slightly different color this is just sometimes uh, will happen depending on the lens that you use. And so I just enable this option by default and this should remove any aberration if it does happen. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable profile corrections. Now, what will happen is depending on your camera lens, sometimes lenses put a little bit of distortion into the image. So by clicking on this option here, enable profile corrections, if there is any uh, distortion in your image, this option here will kind of correct it for you. So I'm just gonna enable this and you'll see what will happen to the image. So you see, it's just actually 
made a little change. So by switching it off, switching it back on again. See that difference there now? So that's the first thing I'm going to do there. So that would be basically the first option that I would do. Now, the good thing about using Lightroom is if you're taking a lot of images with the same proximate kind of lighting, same kind of settings, if you do the editing on one image, you can copy this editing or these options that you've selected across a whole range of images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these images here. So any changes that we've made in this first image, I can now copy these across the board. Now, there's two ways I can select these different images. I can either select the first one, hold down the control key on my Windows machine, and then click on what images I want to select, or I can press the hold down the control key and then the letter A, and this will select them all. If I want to deselect them, control and letter D. So I'm just gonna select all these images. Now, so what I'm gonna do is, the changes made in this first image, I'm going to copy them across all these remaining images. So I take my mouse over here to the right hand side where it says sync, click on this button, I click on check all, make sure everything is selected in this window, and then I'm gonna click on synchronize. So what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna copy all them settings that I've made to the first image across the board to the rest of these ones. And after a few minutes, that'll be done. So we're gonna to go to this first image now. And I'm gonna click on this one here. Let me just see what we have. Yeah, this first one. So one of the first things that I uh, do when I'm actually working on an image is I click on this option up here at the top, it's a crop button. Now, I always want to make sure that I've got my horizon level and straight. So by clicking this crop button up here, there's like a ruler here where it says, it's a straight and two, it's next to angle. If I click on this, go to a part of the picture where I can get the horizon, and then draw a line across. Now you don't even have to go all the way across, you just even part of the way. And this has made a slight change to this image. Now, if the image was very, very crooked, it would make more of a dramatic change. But this is actually straight in my image for me. Now, I don't use this uh, horizon straighten on all the images and sync them across because sometimes your camera may not be, if you're not using tripod, your images might be, the straighten horizon tool might not work properly. So I just do it on each individual image. Now, the next thing we're going to do here is I want to, in this particular image, I want to change the composition of the crop. I just think there's too much of a foreground shown here. So again, I'm going to go back up to the crop tool up at the top. Now, if I want to keep the original ratio, for example, this is like a six by four, three by two. I can, if I want to go down to the bottom right hand corner and you see my mouse changes from hand down to like a cross, I can crop it like this. Click done. Or what I can do is bring this back again. What I'm going to do here from the top is I'm going to click here to see a padlock. Going to click on that, you see the padlock is now open. And now I can actually change this to whatever setting that I want. So again, I'm just going to change this composition here. Click done. See, see now it's actually changed the composition. Now, if you want to have a look at what the changes have been made from the original image to what you're working with at the moment, bring your mouse down here to the, this button here. And this will actually show you the changes that you've made from the previous one. So see here now, you can actually click on this here again and it'll give you different options of how it looks. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I want to perhaps darken the sky maybe a little bit. So I'm gonna click up here in the top where it says graduated filter. But first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually change the exposure on this image. So I'm just gonna brighten it up slightly. I brought my mouse up to this kind of a graph here and you see, as I move this over and back, you see the exposure changing. You can actually change it by bringing your mouse down to this exposure slider button. This will do the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna bring this kind of into the center there. I want to bring the highlights in the sky, uh, the exposure down a little bit on the sky. So I'm gonna to go to graduated filter option here at the top. I'm gonna to bring my mouse up to the top. You see it's like a cross, hold down my left button drag this down to just below the horizon. 
and I'm going to right we've got the highlights here I'm gonna bring the highlights down bring the exposure slider button down slightly and maybe bring a little bit more detail into the sky so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on this clarity button and bring this across now if I exaggerate this here especially if I bring it way way over to the left you see there's not much detail especially in these highlights here on the right if I bring it over to the right hand side you see it's bringing a lot more detail back so now we just put a little bit more detail and interest into the image go down here to done and that will save that little change now I just think in the foreground here is maybe a little bit too bright a little bit too uh, light so I'm going to darken this foreground again I'm going to click on the graduated filter bring my mouse down to the bottom drag it up now again you can bring this up as high or as low as you want you can also adjust the angle if you want to go at an angle like this you can grab this bottom line down here way way back and what I can do then is I can just bring this exposure slider button back a little bit as well and click done now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a little bit of detail um, I'm going to bring out some of the, the shadows in this image so we're going to go down here to where it says shadows slide this button up and you see the difference it makes me go up to 100% and then when you go to minus 100 so I'm just going to bring the shadows up just a slight bit in this image here now this next part I'm going to show you is very very useful what I always want to do is I want to have my blacks in an image one part of my image 100% black and if I can have if there's any whites bring that to 100% white we have two buttons here at the top we've got shadow clipping and highlight clipping so if I click on show shadow clipping here up, the right hand, up in the right hand corner and I'm going to go down here to the black slider have a look here on the left hand side what happens when I bring the blacks all the way down it's all gone blue so you can actually see how much of your image is going into 100% black so what I do on an image like this and again this will depend on the image I bring it over to the left hand side so I can just see a little bit of the black here so now I know I've got true 100% blacks it just gives you a little bit more contrast detail now the next thing um, you could if you want to uh, show the highlights here as well bring the whites slide this across now if your image is ever overexposed part of it say red like this remember we had black blue for the blacks well it's red for the whites you can just bring your whites down to so that you don't get any whites in so now this is an overexposed now bear in mind I always try and get this image as perfect as I can with exposure in camera when I'm taking the image the less you can do the more you can do in camera the better it is when it comes to editing afterwards if less work to do now what I'm going to do here as well is I'm going to go to this contrast slider button here on the right hand side and again I'm just going to exaggerate this to let you see the difference I can really exaggerate the contrast I can really really bring it back so I'm just going to bring this up slightly say about 10% there now the next thing I'm going to do on this image here is I'm going to click on vibrance you see there's a slider here for vibrance on the right hand side now the difference between vibrance and saturation is vibrance will bring a little bit more color to certain colors in an image now if you have say skin tones vibrance won't make that much of a difference to skin tones or say for example you'll see here in sand but if you go to saturation it'll, it'll over saturate all the colors bring out the colors a lot stronger across the whole range so I always work at vibrance first so I'm just going to exaggerate this again to see how the effect that it has and then bring it completely the other way it's now become black and white so again I'm just going to bring this up to say about plus 40 again every image will be slightly different and then I'm going to go here to saturation and maybe bring this here to say about maybe 10 you can actually use a slider or you can click on this section here on the right hand side where the number is and then just type in a number and then hit enter now next thing we're going to do is I'm going to bring up maybe a little bit a little bit of sharpness in the picture it's automatically set for 40 on my program here so I'm going to bring this here maybe just to 50 
And what we're going to do then is we're going to bring some noise reduction into the image. Now, especially if you've got an image taken in low light, you might get a lot of grain or a lot of noise. But I always think that if you're working on any image, uh, any editing, I always find that it might do maybe, it might bring a little bit of grain into the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my noise reduction to about 10 in this image here. So if you go down here to the bottom and have a look at the before and after, you can see now the difference on the before image and afterwards. By the way, it doesn't actually show you the difference on the, the crop. Um, it'll only show you all the changes with the exception of the crop. You can see now this is the image straight from camera. And this is now the image that we've taken afterwards. So you can see there's a big, big difference there. It's only taken a few minutes to actually make these changes. Again, I just think maybe in the sky here, we could bring back maybe a little bit more of the highlights maybe down. So I'm going to click on this graduated filter at the top. Going to bring this down at maybe kind of an angle. And I'm just going to bring the exposure down slightly there and then click done. So again, if we click on the before and after, you see the difference now on this picture here. It's just made a big, big difference there. So that's the first image that we've done. You can see it only took a couple of minutes. Very, very simple to do there. Again, bear in mind, this is just uh, beginners editing, uh, just the basics. You can always play about and practice to see what happens afterwards. Now, this image here, we'll have a go at this one. So again, you'll see that all the changes that we synced across the board earlier on, remove chromatic aberration, enable profile corrections. These have all been copied over from one image to the other. It'll give you details of the make and model of ca camera lens that I'm using. In this case, it was a Tamron 24 to 70 that I used. So again, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to maybe change the crop on this image slightly. I'm gonna click on this padlock on the right hand side. Uh, just bring up the crop slightly this way here. So I just think this be maybe a little bit better, kind of a crop there. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that my horizon is straight. Click on this straighten tool. Uh, I'm just gonna try and find a point here that I think is kind of straight. Now, if you do, or you, you want to change this manually by eye, you can bring your mouse up to the very top. See, it's like two arrows on kind of like a semicircle. You can always adjust this manually yourself again afterwards but I'm fairly happy with that kind of a crop there. So I'm gonna click on done. Now, again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust the exposure on this image. I just think maybe a little bit dark here. Going to bring out some of the shadows on the hill at the background. So I'm gonna click on my slider button, bring this across that way. And I think what we'll do on this one here, we will bring some contrast into the image as well, because by Brighten up the exposure and the shadows, we've lost some of that contrast. So I'm just going to slide this contrast slider over slightly to the right there. Now again, if we click on the preview button again, you can see the difference between the two images already. That's just with a few very minor changes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and bring some detail back into the sky here. Now this is a very overcast, cloudy day. Um, so it wasn't the best for taking landscape photography, but at least this will give you the tools and the knowledge on how to edit other images again later. So I'm going to click on the graduated filter tool up at the top. I'm going to bring this down at an angle. Again, you'll see as I move my mouse about, you can adjust the angle of the gradient. You can also extend it. And I'm going to click on bring the exposure down slightly. So I think that kind of looks good there. Again, I'm going to bring a little bit of clarity into the sky, into the clouds. Again, I'm just going to exaggerate this here on the right hand side, bring it way down. You see, especially up here, as I bring that, slide that button to the left and to the right, how it brings a lot more detail in. Uh, we might bring maybe a little bit of contrast into the, the clouds as well, I think. So because I've got this graduated filter on and it's enabled, we can click on contrast and it'll only apply contrast just to the sky. So again, if I exaggerate it or bring it back, you can see the difference that it makes. So again, just going to bring it to that there, to about 35. Now, I think the next thing we'll do then is we'll click on done. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the here for blacks to make sure my blacks are black. So I'm going to make sure that I click on the slider button here for the blacks. 
bring this down a tiny touch so you see just got a little bit of blue shown here. Now you can bring your mouse over and you can zoom on any part of the image as well. See so you've got that there. So that's kind of looking good there. We're going to go down then to perhaps maybe clarity, a tiny bit of clarity. I will bring this maybe to about 5%. And we're going to bring a little bit of vibrance into this image. Now again, I'm just going to exaggerate this to show you the difference that it makes. So maybe bring this up to say, I, I always like to try and keep the images maybe kind of natural looking the colors. So let me say bring it to about 20 on this image. Again, maybe I might give this maybe about 5% saturation. And that's looking good there. And we'll go down here now to sharpening. Now, here's a little tip what you can do when you're selecting your sharpening. If you hold down your control button, then click on the sharpening slider, it'll put it into black and white. So you can actually see then easier when you've got this out, sorry, out button held down on the slider, how the effect that the sharpening is going to have. So I don't like to over sharpen images too much. So I'm going to put this to about 50. Then I'm going to bring my noise reduction to about 10. And again, if we show the before and after image, see the difference on the two images. Only took a couple of minutes to do, but you can see now we've got a far, far nicer kind of an image. So that's the first, uh, next one. Um, if you've got an image down here that you don't want to edit or select, you can just click on that and then click then on your red and that will deselect it and hide it from your image, from your time scale here at the bottom here. Now, this next image was taken just about maybe five minutes away from the location we were just at a few minutes uh, earlier. And what I'm going to do on this image here is going to adjust the skyline so the horizon is level. Click on the straighten tool. There's a little bit of the horizon here in the background. Again, you don't need the whole of the horizon, just part of it. And that was fairly straight there, so I got that okay there. I think this here, this is maybe a little bit too much of the foreground showing. So again, I'm going to just change this crop. Again, you see my padlock is open. Bring this up, and I think I'll bring this, the sky down a little bit as well. I think this will just be a little bit more of a pleasing composition. So that's looking good there. Now, next thing I think we will do is we will bring down the highlights in the sky, to darken the sky slightly. So I'm going to go into the graduated filter option here on the right hand side. Click on that, bring down my filter. Bring it down about this far. So I've got my highlights taken down. See by moving the highlights option here, it's overexposed, you can see where the red is. Uh, this would have been kind of from camera, bring it down a bit more. Now we've got a bit more detail. I bring down the exposure slightly on the sky. Maybe bring in a little bit more clarity and perhaps maybe a little bit of contrast into the sky as well, and then click on done. Now, I think what we'll do on this overall image, we'll bring in a little bit of contrast into the image. So again, you see just by sliding this over, say to, in this image, say about, let's try say about 20 on this image. That's just giving it a little bit more pop. You can see everything's a little bit more detail there. Going to have a look at the blacks here now. The blacks are already selected here in blue, but again, if I want to make them maybe a little bit blacker, you can see by moving the black slider option, you can tell how much the blacks are going to be in. Again, this is all personal choice. Um, I just like to have them just kind of showing uh, myself personally. So again, just going to keep this to about there. I think that kind of looks good there. Maybe bring it back a little bit more. Next thing we're going to do is bring in a little bit of vibrance. So we're just going to bring up the vibrance slightly on this image. I think that's kind of looking good there. And then bring, say, saturation to about 5%. I'm going to go down now and put my sharpen to 50. And noise reduction to 10%. Now again, the sharpening all depends as well on the type of camera lens that you have. Some lenses do a far better job coming straight from camera, other lenses maybe you need to give, give it a little bit extra uh, push there, tweak. 
So again, if I click on the before and after, see the difference on the two images. Just really, really transform it there. Now, we'll go to this next image, which is just a, little bit, a couple of hundred yards from this location here. And it's old ruins of a castle. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to go up to the top. I'm going to click on the straight and two, and I'm going to cross to the horizon. Get a straight, straight uh, part here. And it's just made a very minor adjustment to it there. So at least I know now my horizon is 100% straight. What I'm going to do is the highlights here in the sky, you can see they're blown out to the red. So we've lost some of the detail. So I'm going to go over to my highlights slider, bring this down to the reds just disappear. Now this isn't blown out. What we're going to do then is click on the shadows option. Now what shadows will do, it'll just bring up all the detail in the shadows. See that there now? We can actually see more detail. Now because we put up the shadows, the highlights now in the sky have actually been lost. So I'm just going to bring the highlights back down again. Uh, we could even bring that down a little bit more there. I think that kind of looks kind of nice. There. That's actually looking good there. You could actually do all these just in the, in, in the order as you go along. I'm going to click here on contrast. Perhaps put in a little bit of contrast into this image. Maybe bring up the shadows slightly. I'm going to go down to the black slider. And again, just want to get in the blacks just peeping. Uh, that's looking good there. I think what I might do is bring up this section here. Uh, or just the overall exposure of this image slightly. Like that. I think that's looking good. And I think in the sky, I'm going to bring the highlights down in the sky, the overall exposure. So I'm going to go up to the graduated filter button here in the top. Bring it all the way down to just below the horizon. Click then on exposure. Slightly. That's looking good. Click on done. And I think what we would do is maybe give clarity option maybe about 10% for this image. So it just makes it kind of pop a little bit more. What we're going to do now is we're going to go to vibrance. So I'm going to try the vibrance here, say to about 20. See how this looks. Uh, maybe even give up maybe a little bit more pop yeah, like that and bring saturation to about 5% and what we're going to do then is we're going to go down to sharpen again 50% and noise reduction to 10% so if we have a look at the before and after of the same image you see how the image was underexposed the castle itself and yet the sky was overexposed so now we've made a big big difference in this image you can see a lot more detail has come back into the image and it's just a really really good picture now a bit of advice is if you do get maybe a lot of maybe overexposed parts in your image and maybe underexposed what i would recommend to do is when you are taking the image and you're maybe a little bit uncertain maybe take your image maybe slightly underexposed rather than overexposed you can always bring details back from shadows, but you can't take overexposed parts back into an image. It's just not possible. The information's not there. So before and after. Now, again, just very, very nearby this location here. There was a few plants growing on the ground here. Now, what we're going to do on this image here, you can see this top part here where it's red. This just means that the, sky, the top part of this image is blown out. It's overexposed. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the highlights option here. This will bring down the highlights. So now this isn't overexposed. This foreground uh, detail here in the rocks, I just think it's, it's a little bit distracting. Your eyes drawn to the rocks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my graduated filter, slide it up to here, uh, bring my exposure down slightly. So now I think out there is just a little bit better looking there. So I think what we'll do here is, again, your eye is always drawn to the brightest point of a picture. Just bear that in mind, always, always the brightest part, that's where your eyes are going to be drawn to automatically. So I'm going to change the crop in this image. So I'm going to click up here on the crop overlay button. I'm going to put this to the original crop. Uh, just to see how this looks. I think that might look better there. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up the exposure slightly. I'm going to bring the contrast slightly. I'm going to bring the blacks down a tiny bit. You see the blacks just appearing here. And then perhaps a tiny bit of clarity, say about 5%. Just going to lift the shadows a tiny bit in this image. Like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the vibrance up to, say, 20 in this image and give a saturation of 5%. Again, I'm going to just sharpen this image slightly and then we're going to bring noise reduction as well. So again, on this image, if we have a look at the before and after, see the difference on the two images. There wasn't that much of a change uh, in the image in the editing, but you can see it's made a big, big difference on it there. So that was really, really quick, easy to do there. So our final image here is very, very close by again. So again, we've got a lot of this part of the sky here is blown out. So if I bring the highlights down, get rid of them completely. I just think this white part here is, your eyes been drawn to it rather than the plants, just the intended focus. So I'm gonna do the cropness down lower. I'm gonna center this flower in the center, the rule of thirds. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up the exposure in the overall image. This side here where the rock is, I'm going to bring down the highlight in that, the exposure. So I'm going to go up to graduated filter. Uh, by, by the way, whatever options you've used in your last image beforehand, it automatically saves them. So again, highlights already taken down. I'm just going to bring down this exposure here. So I think what we'll do here is I might bring up the contrast slightly in this image, bring up the shadows and bring the blacks down slightly. So we've just got a little bit of black shown down here. See where it's been shown in blue. Then I think we might just bring up the vibrance in this, say try this at say 15. And I might just give the saturation at five. Now again, if we go to the before and after image, see the difference in the two images. Big, big difference there. Now, the good thing about this program is as you're working, you don't have to save your work. Your work has been saved automatically. Now, what I'm going to show you is how to export these to a final image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all my images. I'm going to click here on the left hand side. I'm going to go up to where it says library at the top and I'm going to click on export. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the location where I want to save these finished images. So I'm going to select the location. In this case, I'm going to put them into the same folder as the original images, sample images. Click select folder. And I'm going to put it into a subfolder. So I'm just going to call this uh, HQ version. Again, you can name this whatever you want. You can give this a custom text or you can just pick original name, original file number. Let's just see, I'm gonna to put to custom, uh, let's see, we'll call this uh, day out. Now, what we're going to do then is these settings here. So if you're going to be printing these off, I put the quality up to 100%, resolution to 600. Save it for JPEG, or you could put it to TIFF file. Uh, TIFF will give you a very, very high quality file. JPEG will be suitable for most people. I'm going to keep the resolution here, and these are basically all the settings that I would keep when I'm exporting. So I'm going to click on Export. And this will just take a few minutes to export them to that folder on your computer. You see, it'll actually give you a visual indication up here at the top of the progress being made.
So as you can see up at the top, it's completely finished. Now, if you want to export these for putting online, social media or Facebook, I'm going to show you the options that I use when I'm using it for Facebook. So I'm going to click on export again. This time I'm going to call this same location. I'm going to call it web version. Going to change it this time to resolution to 300. Resize to fit long edge by 960 pixels. Uh, sorry, resolution, I'm going to change this here to 72. You can also limit your file size to whatever size you want. So if you don't want the files to be any bigger than, say, uh, 3 megabytes, you can put in 3,000 kilobytes. Uh, you can put sharpen for screen, but I generally just leave this option because we've already done our own sharpening. And then click then on export. This should take a lot quicker because the file size is going to be a lot smaller. And you'll see by the indicator here at the top. So that's finished and complete. So if I just minimize the screen, go into my sample images folder. You see here I've got a HQ version and this is the finished images that are ready for printing. See how it's named them with the custom name day out one of six, day out three of six. If I go then to the web version, it's giving the same version again, but just in a smaller file size. So this is basically how you use Lightroom. And again, it's just a very, very basic, simple introduction to the basics of using this really, really handy, useful program. So we've come to the end of this week's tutorial. I hope you learned a few things. And if you enjoyed it, please give this little video a like and subscribe. And if there's any videos that you'd love to see in the future, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll try and get that video done for you. All the best and see you again.